Hi, and welcome to this week's episode hosted by Gray and Mark Lawson, John's Health and Fitness, and Mark Elm of Leeds Beckett University, where we take training theory and science onto the gym floor. Hey up everybody, welcome back. Here we are, Yorkshire Fitness Podcast, episode 23, we are now on. Um, so yeah, we're, we're, we're on a roll, we're, although we had a little blip last week, we've just mentioned it, we, we missed a week, it's the first week we've missed for us 22 or 23 weeks, just uh, things happen, work. Helm, um, what were it y'all? What were y'all? Boiler service. Boiler, yeah, <laughs> boiler service. <laughs> scheduled time waiting for a boiler service. And then those hard time skills. So we did end up missing a week. So we apologise if any of you are like gutted that you missed an episode. <laughs> but we're going to make up for it today. So um, we've got a guest on. So we really enjoyed this guest. So we've just been t- chatting for. We've had a GP. Um, we've had a hypnotherapist and we've had a bodybuilder. So we've gone down the route today. Of, we've got a runner. Um, so this is Mick. I'm going to introduce him. Mick Hill is a member of Leeds Running Club. Uh, Mick started training here with us about three, three, four months ago, Mick. Just he's been reading up a little bit more. He's, he's let's say, he's getting, he's getting past his probable golden years now of, of running. So, uh, <laughs> you can't just say that. He's only my age. So, we haven't got his time yet, Mick. No, no. So it's so, late mid forties then. Yeah, <laughs> late years in the late to mid forties. So yeah. Mick got to uh, after his prime. Yeah, nearly fifty. Nearly fifty. So Mick read up and kind of his awareness of the importance of strength training to help his running. Um, just kept probably a bit more of a highlight on it here. She's got a bit of it on. So that's kind of where you seek our advice, wasn't it? And come and join yeah, yeah. us as a member yeah. here. So yeah. I'll pass you on to Mick now. Mick's just going to have a little bit of a kind of brief summary over his running career. From starting out, when what age you actually started? So I'll let you take over from there. What how old were you when, when you went started? Uh, I start I started running when I was probably about I think the first race cross country at primary school. I was about 10, 10, 11. Right. Uh, did a little bit of running, 10, 11, 12, then kind of drifted away from running, doing my early teens. Didn't didn't really do much competitive sport from the age of 12 to 16. Um, got back into it, I guess, when I was 16, 17. And, you know, I've pretty much gone ever since. Did, when so, you first started, when you said that about primary school, straight away, then, did you knew, did you, or did you, or did somebody know you were decent at running from a very young age? No, I mean, I wasn't very, I wasn't, I wasn't particularly good when I was that age. Right. You know, I was, uh, I guess I was like mid, mid, mid pack, if you will. I, mean, I went to, I went to a really progressive primary school. I went to a, uh, grew up in Bolton on the other side of the Pennines, a slightly better side of the Pennines, and, uh, <laughs> over in uh, over in Lancashire, and then you know the, the, the primary school I went to, we had a headmaster who was like really big into into into, into sport, um, the outdoor activities. So we did all sorts. We did we did cross country. We used to play we did badminton, table tennis, football. We went on hikes. We did all sorts, you know. And then you know everyone just did cross country. So we used to we used to there's a, there's a Bolton. Uh, I remember it was a Bolton uh, primary schools cross country league. Wow. So at primary school level, like eleven and below, we'd be we'd be racing every couple of weeks at you know local primary school. Probably only you know only like maybe only racing for like ten minutes, but you know back then that seemed like quite a long yeah. way. Yeah, when you're a kid, uh, that uh, is cross country. It was, just, it was just really really good cool fun. Yeah. 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 Do you know yeah. that though? When you talk about that, this sounds really nerdy. This, but you'll love it. But that book bounds, and it you know when they were yeah. on about you know people getting into certain sports yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. the bounce thing and it were all about we like, don't know why his sons are so good at table tennis but when you added all the little things teacher coach or weather yeah, you know yeah, yeah. all these little things coach not coach uh, <laughs> teacher coach you know all these things that fit together that help people along the way and if they hadn't if they'd have been born somewhere else you know like if you hadn't gone to that primary school yeah, you maybe yeah. not got into it but i don't know that's just enough but it just, when you said that you're you know like good teachers change people they can change that people's lives a bit can't they? absolutely and and I, I, had a, I had a very like i had a very working class upbringing that like, single parent family didn't have a didn't have a fox pissing but um you know just through through going to a good primary school 
this, you know, the state primary school, but you know, got got involved in all sorts. And we had a we had a swimming pool. We had an outdoor swimming pool. About, in Bolton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was progressive. And it was about <laughs> it was about uh, this swimming pool. They, they, I think they'd raised they'd raised the money themselves to, to, to build this little swimming pool. And it can only have been about twelve meters long by about six meters wide. We we, we do outdoor pitch and swimming like year awesome. round. Like, you know, so we didn't go off to like the local authority swimming bath. Oh, yeah, no, swim. like most of us we, we swim in this little little but it's just like that's that was, you know i had a very very active um, childhood you know uh, grew up without a car went everywhere on foot played out like like you know this is like what kids did back in the 80s yeah, 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 I, yeah. Remember. And, uh, I was just active played a lot of football on the park i was rubbish at football i wasn't i wasn't i guess quick enough to over short distance and i wasn't big enough uh i could knock the ball around but I was never really good enough to play um, play as part of a right. decent team. So I I over a period of time I I fell into running um, because as I got older um, I found that I was quite good at it. Right. More from an endurance point of view. Yeah, age age like way probably when, when that highlight of two men you think it was pretty good. Probably, probably when I when I got to about 17, 18. Right. That's secondary school. That's a great question because well, at the minute the thing we know is that 16, 17 year olds are not getting back into sport, they're dropping out. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Be really, I'm interested to know what, what was it that happened at 16, 17 that, that took you back into competing and getting back into sport? Do you know something? I can't, I can't quite remember what. I, mean, I, I had a few wild years when I was about 14, 15, 16, where, you know, did all the things that, all, all the kind of naughty things that, uh, that kids did back then. Yeah, but running away from things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> some, of the, some of the stuff was like borderline illegal, but I won't, but I won't, you know, I won't go into detail. But um, you know, I got to sort of up to no good really. And then uh, then I just somehow got back into running when I was about yeah, about 16, 17. Found that I was you know, better than everyone else in the school. And uh, I think I just I just enjoyed the fact that I was I was good at something. Um, I can't I can't pinpoint the exact the exact moment when this happened. I've got no records, you see. There's no no social media back then, so I've got no I've got no photographs. I've got no diary records. I've got nothing really. I can't. It's all just been. Yeah. Like, sometimes you don't. Sometimes there memory. is something that sticks in your head. Though, isn't there with certain things? You know, like someone swings one clips one day and it's like let's sort this out. You hear people talking about it a lot, don't you? A lot of sportsmen don't they? They go off at rails a little bit or do whatever and then this happened and boom it snapped me back in but yeah you fell back into it so yeah, that's, yeah. that's I a mean, good from, thing it? from like from you know from uh from sort of 16 17 and getting and getting into winning fairly seriously you know it's not all been you know we'll, we'll talk about it later yeah, yeah. it's not all just been a you know a continual like smooth smooth ride but um i've got pretty good from about the age of about 19 20 i've got like really good records of certainly all the racing that I've done. Yeah. And I can I can look at my race record race results over, you know, twenty going back to say nineteen ninety four. What's that? Twenty eight years. I've got twenty eight years of, of race records. I might, I might not have all my training yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but I've got my we race record. Yeah. And you know, I can often pinpoint sort of where I was in terms of my life in general, with what I was doing yeah, from, yeah, a, yeah. from a, a sort of winning perspective, right. you know, it's kind of weird, really. One thing then for people who are uh, who do listen, the ones who do, that, um, when you say you were pretty good at it, so what's that type? What what we're looking so at? What distances? What so yeah, so, so what times do you do? When you when you started realizing that you were good, so that got that spurred yeah, you on yeah, a little yeah. bit because everybody likes to be good at something, don't they? So <laughs> so when I was when I was like when I was when I was seventeen eighteen. Um, still in secondary school, um, I wasn't. I wasn't that good. No, but I was good. I was good in the context of you know I was one of the best ones in my year group at school. But I also ran for a club, ran for Bolton Harriers, the local the local club. Um, and at club level, I was, I was very very average. Yeah. Like the got the gold standard for for like secondary school kids is the um, is the English schools champs. 
they have championships like yeah. cross country and track and field, but you've got to qualify through your through your through your county. Yep. So back, 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 back then, I you know I, I grew up in, in Greater Manchester, and uh, you know I got nowhere near making in the schools track and field champs because the, the qualifying standards were just way above the level that I was at. Uh, and at cross country, we took the top eight from the county champs to the English schools. And uh, I think my highest place in the Greater Manchester schools champs was 11th. But I never got, I never got to compete in the English schools cross country champs. Okay. In later years, a lot of them, a lot of my mates, who, who, you know, who became my mates through running, you know, had all done, they'd all come through the, through the English schools ranks, mm -hmm. they'd all been to the English schools, yeah. and got these stories yeah. of, you know, how they got on in the, in, in the English schools, and, Yada yada yada, and I'd never been to English schools, so left left Bolton to go to, to university. Went to, went to university in Leeds. Was pretty average in my first year at Leeds, uh, but made made a big big improvement in my second year. In my second year at Leeds, I was probably I was nineteen twenty, and I was still competing as a as a, a an under twenty athlete. Um, and in, in a in a in the winter of I think it was ninety five to ninety six. So across that winter, so in December, um, I ran the Greater Manchester Cross Country Champs in under twenty. Came came eleventh in the county champs under twenty level. Yeah. End of January it was the Northern Champs, where all the Northern counties, you know, all the clubs within the Northern counties, so. Time and Weir, uh, Great Manchester, Yorkshire, Merseyside, Cheshire, Derbyshire, Cumbria, they all compete in these Northern Champs. Came 14th as an under 20. Wow. Three weeks later, went down to Newark to win the National Cross Country Championships. And as an under 20, I came 11th. Wow. So in one winter, I went from being, I guess, you know, not even really a, just a, an okay county standard runner to being. Like eleventh in the in the country at national level, and wow. and, 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 and you know we we'll talk about, about about why that happened, but um, fundamentally it was because I, I just started training harder. Yeah. <laughs> you know, what I mean, it's like yeah. but, but, took but, it more seriously. Yeah, took yeah, it yeah, more yeah, seriously. Yeah. I trained yeah. harder. You know, the the, 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 the the lifestyle and the the people I had around me in Leeds were a really good fit for me, and uh, and I made this big 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 improvement. And that was in. That was in '96 as a as an under under twenty, and then the following year I went into the senior ranks, and uh, you know by the by the time sort of '97, '98, '99 came around, I was you know I was I was I was pushing you know for sort of like top thirty in the country at cross country yeah. at, at national level, uh, got a couple of uh, got a couple of England international bests. At cross country, uh, went and ran uh, the European uh, mountain running champs in in uh, in, uh, in the Czech Republic, I think it was, um, for, for the England senior team. Uh, I started to run run a lot quicker on the track and on the roads. So I think by the time my best year was in two thousand, I was kind of twenty four, twenty five in two thousand, and uh, and I, I ran. You know, around twenty three forty nine, uh, five miles on the road. I would, I was just going to say, can we just put a few? Yeah, uh, so, just, just put it into perspective because yeah. obviously people, what generally people will be listening, they'll have a bit of an idea of time. You know, most yeah, people yeah. Will listen to what these podcasts. If you listen to a sports or a health and fitness yeah. podcast, you probably do a little bit of running yourself. So we've probably all got an idea of what we can run at ten k. Yeah, I know my pretty much average. Hell, you got to fly. You're doing well, aren't you? Ten k. Yeah, so I got. <laughs> so I got uh, so shut up. Just, just, just up. Us with a few stats. So when you yeah, so in the, in two thousand, uh, I had a couple of like really good breakout uh, performances on the road. Yeah. So I went and uh, get which way around the one, but I went and did. Uh, a, a local race in 2000 called the Asken 10k. Yeah, that yeah. Asken's over sort of down towards Doncaster. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I rocked up there on a Wednesday night in May uh, and, and solo ran a 30.03 for 10k. 
for three seconds outside. 30 <laughs> minutes. So, third, so anybody listening, 30 minute 10K. So you're averaging three, yeah. it's pretty much bang on your average of three minute kilometers. Yeah, yeah. Repeat for 10K. <laughs> you can't drive that. Absolutely crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, what, you know, I kind of, I, I dine out a little bit on this asking 10K because um, I would. No <laughs> one. I mean, the race, the, race, the, race is, the race is still going now. I think they've had to, I think they've had to. I'd still be going now. I think they've had, uh, had to postpone it this year, but, and obviously missed the, the last two years because of the pandemic. But, you know, since 2000, no one's ran quicker. So I'm quite, quite proud of that. And, I, and again, it's just one of these low key, Wednesday night races where you rock up and you, you know you just you just go in there for a I, I just went there because I wanted a race I wanted a blast was wasn't a target race I wasn't I hadn't prepared specifically for it I was just in good shape yeah. rocked up and I, the gun went and I just hammered it from the gun and just managed to hang on and run 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 at the time at the time that was a PB yeah. so later on that summer uh, around thirty oh two to ten k on a on a very hilly course in Bradford so. Good time, but um, for the last 20 odd years, I've been haunted by the fact that I was two seconds away oh, from burning desires. Can I just ask me, I mean, we're going to talk about what you're doing at, at the minute and yeah, yeah. later, but I'm interested because my, my background is like youth talent development, sports coaching from, from young kids. Yeah. But would you be able to do what you're doing now and still be running now the way that you are if you'd have invested? More, a lot more harder training, competitive sport from 11 onwards. You'd had that school's career that all your friends had had. If you'd have got into athletics at 11 and you'd be on the track and running laps and tempo laps and all the things that, that young kids have put through endurance training, do you think you could still be running out the, the European times that you are if you'd have invested all that effort so before 16? So are you are asking if you'd have got the yeah, 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 yeah. burnout? It's, so a dead, no, it's, dead, it's, it's, a dead, it's a dead interesting, uh, it's a dead interesting, um, like discussion to have actually, because um, I've got a load of mates who have ridiculously good, um, like junior groups, mm. like you know, at, at, run at the highest level, uh, won English school titles, run for the GB, been in well, cross country champs and, and track and field champs and you know never really got beyond the age of 22 23 mm. and that's it they just stopped and um i'm of the, i'm of the view i'm of the view that there's no such thing as there's no such thing as physical burnout burnout is psychological i think a lot of the i you know i think a lot of these um a lot of kids who, 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 who drift out of sport it's from psychological burnout, not physical burnout. Um, people talk about, you know, this is relevant to me that, you know, people talk about um, like a, a like a runner's um, like running age. Mm. So I'm 46 now, 46 and a half, nearly, nearly, nearly 47. Um, and I, I had a big chunk of, and we'll talk about it in a minute when we, when we talk about my my, my up and down like weight um, gain and loss story, but I, I had a good chunk of my late 20s, early 30s where I wasn't really training. Uh, and to some extent, that probably does help me now that I'm 46 because I'm relatively young. My running age mm. is relatively young. I've probably got the running, I've probably got the running age of a of maybe a 35 year old, not a not a 46 year old, because I've not spent I've not had myself every single year. Um, but I think when you look at the development of kids, you know, and I'm not an, I'm not I'm certainly not qualified to to talk about um, I guess the coaching of young athletes. There are clearly some young athletes who are, who are um, I guess, training at a, a level that is well beyond their age. Mm. You know, so like 11, 12, 13 year olds who are training like like senior athletes. And that, that there's probably some real risk to that because it's probably, you know, especially if you're still developing physically. Yeah. Um, 
but there's some in, there's so, there are some examples of, of, of athletes who have, who have trained quite seriously and intensively from a young age who, who have actually had some incredible results from doing that. So one of the, one of the, one of the world's top uh, middle distance runners right now is, is a guy called Jakob Ingebrigtsen from yeah. Norway yeah. and you know he was training with his brothers from a very very young age at a very at a level that was way way in advance of his um, mm. of his years um, and you know it, it remains to be seen you know how long you know his career will will last you know he may he may decide to retire you know at the age of 25 you know um, who knows? But um, it's, a, it's a really true yeah. story because I mean I don't know how many how many winning coaches we'll get on the listening, but we'll have a lot of parents, and I think this is something that I think me I've got very young kids and you you you've all got your own, own kids as well about how we expose them to to sport and competitiveness and intensity at a young age. And from what we're hearing here is actually it's you found it because you enjoyed it rather than because it was a an external influence to kind of push and train and do this and do that and. And there's, there's all the all roads all road don't lead to Rome. No, they don't. There's, there's so much in that. I mean, that's a, that's another thing you can talk about forever, can't you? But I've been on about that to somebody today. I think it was to Mark who trained. We're just on about the different things. And but kids now they train at an intensity out there from like 13, 14, and by the time they you know, so by the time they're twenty three, they've done a ten year professional career, haven't they? Yeah. You know, you look yeah. at them and you think, you met the wonder they've yeah. all got. And like you said it, but I think you're right. I it's think it's psychological, psychological rather than yeah. thing. Yeah. The, the, the psychological burn out from it, they've had enough, haven't they? It's just like, I don't need this anymore. And they're like, you know, I can't keep going with it. Whereas, and the answer no any different, but anyway, that's another one. So, yeah. back on to yeah, yeah. We could, we could, we could, yeah, we could, yeah, we could, we could go way off on that because yeah. it, it is interesting. I think all of us, you know, like, especially, I mean, we coach, kids don't we you know like and when you see it and, and how people are with their own kids you could go off on it all day it's not so, where it could just be literally running around in a circle yeah, all night we have got us we've all got our own views on it but then so you went to there so then you got to what mid-20s and is that when wheel fell off yeah, yeah so i was talking about that a little bit then. yeah yeah so i was probably you know i had my best year in 2000 um left left leads in the in the in the september moved to london for for, for a crap job uh, struggled for a little bit down there. Uh, winter, of, winter of 2000, got shin splints. I think I went from, you know, all my running leads was on trails and soft surfaces. I, I lived in Henley, great place to, to, to be a runner, loads of great places to run. And uh, when I got to London, I was just doing a lot of running on the, on the, on the, on the, on the concrete tarmac. Uh, got shin splints. So I struggled through the winter. So I'm hearing you left Yorkshire and things got worse. Yeah, 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 yeah I don't think yeah, it's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just repeat that. You left Yorkshire and <laughs> things got worse. Hey, yeah, I've got um, I've got nothing, nothing but great things to say about Yorkshire. So you left Lancashire, things got better. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then you left Yorkshire, things got worse Absolutely, again. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I was going to yeah. leave that there for yeah, you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so London, I really struggled that that winter. Uh, ended up ended up back in Bolton by the spring of 2001. Got back on it. Trained pretty hard that summer. Ran, ran pretty well, but not quite as well as two thousand. And then going going into two thousand and two. This is this is again. I just can't can't quite put my finger on what happened. But I was twenty. I was twenty six, right. And and up to, up to that point in my life, I had never been able to put weight on. Like I was I was stick thin. I looked. Frail, I was probably about nine stone, 11 ish. No one, no one, you sent me them photos. I was just, I was just, I was just, I was just natu one, naturally lean, right? Uh, I drank a lot of beer, I ate curries, loads of fast food, I grew up on white bread with every meal. So, you know, my it was all metabolic. I was just naturally, naturally skinny, despite the fact that I had a pretty shitty diet. Did a lot of running, but you know, but I was just mm. so thin, right? 2002, or back in 2001, started to put weight on. It was noticeable, like first time ever. Mm. Right? And I wasn't really weighing myself, so I don't, I, I can't quantify the rate at which it went on, but it started to go on. And at first, I think it was like, it was quite a bit of a novelty, because I'd always been a bit, um, I guess, uh, um, 
must be over, or like self aware, yeah, like conscious of yeah, yeah, yeah. you, know, like really skinny. You know, you want to be a bit, a bit, bit, bit bigger, or you know. And, and um, I did a little bit of like vanity lifting. I did a bit of weight lifting just to, for vanity reasons, because I wanted to just have yeah. a slightly bigger upper body and whatnot. It's not necessarily conducive to running, but so I lift some weight to try and yeah. just keep myself, uh, you know, try and put weight on. And I could never put weight on. So, so 2002, it was evident that I started putting weight on. And, and, you know, looking back, and my diet was like, my diet was as bad as a diet can, as bad as a diet can get. Yeah. So I was working on a, re- I was working on a retail park in, in what was effectively a, I worked in, that, in IT tech support, so I was effectively in a call centre with some good lads. But every morning, we'd be on the uh, bacon buddies. Every lunchtime, we'd be out in the retail park getting whatever, chippy lunch, Mackie D's, whatever. And then I'd come home at night and get takeaway again. I was on takeaway three times a day. <laughs> I've, I've been a bit runny. So I've been a bit runny. The diet was like, the diet was just shocking. I never had to worry about that. And uh, so 2002, I um, started to get weight. So in the spring of 02, um, I got a, I had a problem with my, uh, one of my testicles. I had to have surgery and uh, hit me for six. Um, it was somewhat nothing in the end, but they still operated on me and uh, it completely immobilized me. I couldn't, uh, and I couldn't, I couldn't do any, any real physical activity for about three months, three months. They cut into my groin, did all sorts, and uh, thought, it was, thought it was a sports hernia because it's a, it's a big incision in my groin. And uh, for, that was the first, like, uh, the first period of like inactivity I had for, for years. I'd have a free cough here and there, but I never had three months of yeah. today. And uh, during that time, my weight just ballooned. So did you just carry on eating yeah, as well? Yeah, 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 yeah. Even you were doing and I don't, I don't, I don't have the numbers to back this up, but I must have gone from about 10, I must have hit about 11 stone. Uh, it's still pretty light, yeah. but it's still heavier yeah. than what I'd been yeah. running at. And I had a mate I used to run with, and I'll never forget this, I had this mate, Matt Planner, great guy. And... Uh, He'd come and run with me and he just beast me on these runs. It was very hilly in Bolton where I lived and we go out around the moors and stuff and uh, he just he beast me on every single run. He just run away from me. He made every, he made every run. He was a great lad, but he made every run fucking painful. So much so that I just I just got fucking it just running became it was no longer enjoyable. Every run was a chore. And I didn't realize that I did not, I did not make the link at the time between the fact that I'd gained all this weight yeah. and my inability to run up hills. Yeah. You know, it was like <laughs> looking back and just watching them, you know, you're carrying, a, you're carrying an extra sort of like six, seven kilos yeah. around with you, and it's visible, you know. And uh, anyway, long story short, I, I threw my, I was, at the time I threw myself into work because I was busy with work and, um, and uh, doing lots of hours and, and you know. And from, from 2002 to 2008, I drifted up to 15 stone. So I went from a race weight of maybe 9, 11 yeah. to 15 stone three. I mean, when you think of 15 stone to a lot of people, it's not that heavy, but when you think and, of the percentage and, and, of body weight, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's increase there. That and, is a big increase. And that, and that was from about that's from about the age of twenty six to about thirty three. Yeah. And uh, I still, I still, I still did some running. I still running. I still did. I still, I, still, I kept trying to come back. So I made umpteen sort of like half hearted attempts to come back. I'd, I'd do a little bit of running, then I stop. Do a bit more, you know. And I still did. I still, did, I still raced. You know. I think um, so. At some somewhere within that timeline, you know. I've done like a like a fifty minute ten k. Still all right, actually. No, but it's still 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 still. Yeah, still yeah, I think it's exceptional. Yeah, it's still, <laughs> still, it's still, it's still decent running. But, but when you've run when you've run a, a thirty yeah. minute ten k, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you run a fifty minute ten k, that's a that's a big drop off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I knew, and I knew, and I knew, yeah. I knew, uh, I knew full well that it, you know that I had this like, kind of weight problem. You know, it was obvious. It was obvious that I had a weight. You can see it. Yeah. You know, I've gone from being a, a little skinny guy to being a, 
a, a big guy. And um, we shared some photos. I don't know whether you know me because I know you said you put some good maybe. stuff. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll share, yeah, we shared yeah, them on yeah. Instagram and so, Facebook. So anybody listening so, to this yeah. is wondering what Mick looked like. Uh, but nine and ten, so sixteen. If, if you're all listening and it's YouTube, there's me and him sitting next to each other. It's like before and after pictures. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, this is what it used to look like. And it wasn't, it, you know, it wasn't it, having put on four stone and muscle. It was yeah. belly fat, yeah. belly fat yeah. on my tits. Uh, and um, it's quite funny looking back because I, you know, I consider myself to be like, you know, reasonably well read, and, and I understand that, uh, you know, I understand a lot of the science behind. Um, endurance running um, but I never I just never really made the link between diet and weight <laughs> <I mean. laughs> you know so, so I continued to like I continued to I mean I had a job at the time during those years uh, probably around 2004 2005 I started a job that was field based I was working for a a uh, national chain of betting shops. And uh, I was all over the country. Uh, I was a project manager looking after like shop, uh, shop fit work effectively. And uh, I was in the car like eight, nine hours a day on some of the, some of the longer days. Mm. And I would just have the heat in the car. Every morning I'd get up, I'd stop at the nearest like footy wagon, get myself a Bacon, egg, mushroom, fat, a cup of tea with a few sugars in. And, uh, and that's like maybe six o'clock breakfast. And then when I got to my destination, you know, I'd be having a second breakfast, you know, I'd be, I'd be eating out for lunch. It's just, honestly, I, just, I must have consumed, I must have been up at like easily 5,000 calories a day. At that time, yeah. like, you know, you said now, looking back, you know, you're eating all the wrong yeah. things. At the time, yeah. did you know that you were eating all yeah. the wrong things? Yeah. Or were you just kind of going, I, just, I, I think yeah. I'm eating okay. I'm not, not yeah. great, but I know I'm not eating yeah. okay. But I'll give you. No, 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 no. I knew. I knew. I, I, I mean, I knew. I mean, even now, even now, I still, you know, I still binge. And uh, even now, I know, I know when my, um, I know when my diet has, uh, has, has, has gone to, 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 to a dark place. But I thought, you just, you just, you just blank it out, and you just, you just get on with it. You just, you just. Um, yeah, no, so, in the sand a little bit. Yeah, 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 put yeah. in the sand a little bit. I mean, I was very, very, um, I've always been very, very good at like focusing. I've got this like laser sharp focus. If I get, if I get, if I get into something, I can really, really focus on it. I think at the time I was just focused on work. So it's like work, so work, work, work. work. Yeah. And, you know, eating, it, it was, I guess it was just fuel, mm. you know, stress, busy with work. So I'd, I'd eat and it would just be, you know. Mm. So what was the yeah. trigger point then, Mick? What was the cut off point where you went so, to up? So yeah, so I gained all this weight from about 02 to um, 08, got to like 33 and, you know, I was, I don't think what I did. Oh yeah, that's, I did, uh, I decided in 08, I can't remember the exact trigger point, but I decided to um, get it off. And I, uh, and I just started running. And I, I pretty much over over two years, pretty much ran it off. And I absolutely, I mean, I was training, I was probably training harder. Once I'd shifted the weight, I was training harder than what I've tra- than what I trained when I was in my early twenties. Right. Uh, it was just, it was, a, it was just, a, I didn't really address my diet. So my diet was still pretty. I had good days and bad days. I didn't really tackle my diet. I just, I just, um, I just trained and trained and trained. Like I think I got, I think I had a spell where I did go part by my workload um, dropped for about a year for various reasons. So I had a bit of a an easy year with work, and uh, I just took the opportunity and uh, did did lots and lots of running. My body held, I was 33, 34, 35. My body held up pretty well. Uh, I, didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't break. There's always, there's always a risk when you're carrying oh, excess yeah. weight. Yeah, then, yeah. Like running, probably one of the, you know, it's such an impactful sport. You know, it's not, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily recommend running as a, as a means to, to lose weight because it's, um, it is so. Especially if you've never run before. Yeah. Not it, it, runner, yeah. I mean, I can go back to my yeah. lockdown experiences, right? Um, I was like 15 stone, so I probably yeah. got 
got you were you then and I couldn't run every day. So I had to bike, run, yeah, bike, yeah, run, yeah, bike, yeah. run, because if I tried to run two, three days in a, in a row, I, I just couldn't, yeah. you know, the joints hurt, it was just miserable. Well, so yeah, I, I got quite lucky in that I, I, I was able to run, a pretty, and, I, and I built my volume up gradually, you know, I didn't, I didn't just go at it in week one, it was sort of, you know, over a period of time, I, I built my running volume, and uh, I got into this sort of, I got into the, into the, mindset of um i guess weighing myself so i could track i could track my weight coming down and you know as the weight started to come down uh that motivated me to to keep it going mm. and i think you know it might have been uh, it's pretty it's pretty horrific at first you know you're not you don't always see results straight away and you certainly don't see results in terms of your race performances but but when i started to see improvement in race performances and I started got got to about 12 stone. I was like, you know something? I'm nearly there. All I've got to do is just, you know, and, and as I you know, and the, the motivation grew and grew and grew as I got closer and closer to what I guess was my my goal weight. Mm. I, didn't, I, I didn't start off with a goal weight. Mm. I was like, I'm just gonna run and get my weight down and see where I get to. But suddenly I thought, you know something? I can maybe get back to you know yeah. my old racing weight. I I got down to, I got down to 10 stone three. In 2011, ran about 31 20 for 10k at the age of 35. Not not quite at the level of that in my mid 20s, but but it was a really it was a really impressive comeback. So it was about, about three years from 15 stone back down to about 10 stone. Correct. Yeah. 20 2008 to 2011. I think it's a really important message for people because I think I mean, you guys will see this a lot more than I will. But yeah, yeah. Our, our people think they'll they're going to drop. Yeah. a huge amount of weight in a very fast amount of time. So you you were running every day or, or three very very frequently rapid miles, but it still took three years to, to drop did. five stone. It did, it did, and and again, I've got I've probably got I've not got a great deal of data from that period. I've got some data, you know, I wasn't weighing myself every day or every week even, but you know, it's fair to say that even though I shifted five stone in three years it didn't come off it wasn't it wasn't even mm. so there were spells where it even went back up yeah. and then it didn't, but i just per, i just persevered it's like brute force approach i just persevered 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 didn't have any didn't have any setbacks really i think looking back during that three-year period i might have had the odd ache and pain but i didn't have anything that really uh, that really really uh so you running, you know, no, yeah, nothing yeah. really threw me yeah. uh, until until 20, late twenty eleven. Uh, I got I got plantar fasciitis mm. in one of my feet. I forget which one might be my right foot. Uh, so I started. I got this um, little bit of a little bit of tenderness in my heel, and it became agony. And uh, it's diagnosed as as, as, as plantar fasciitis. Uh, I ended, I ended up going, uh, ended up having rounds and rounds of treatment. I had, I had cortisone injection into it. I had shockwave therapy. I saw a podiatrist who made up some custom orthotics. Uh, through the kitchen sink, I fixing it, and uh, nothing would shift it. Uh, never got to the, never, never got to the root cause of, of what it, of, 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 of um, what did it. I think, I think, I don't think it was overuse. I'd had three years of running and uh, my body was, was pretty tolerant of the, mm -hmm. of, the, of the volumes I was doing. Yeah. I think I think I might have stood on a stone, believe it or not, and, uh, and that just aggravated it. Anyway, couldn't shift it. Took about 18 months to shift and I could barely run. And uh, something happened at work. I think we took on a, I took on a big project at work, got, got really, really busy with work again. My focus shifted a little bit. So from 2011 to 2018, I um, put all the weight back on again. Wow. So I got this time I got to 16 stone. So the photographs you yeah. shared, uh, the one of me, oh, that one. the one of me stood by the Land Rover. Yeah. That's me at sort of 16 stone right. in 2018. Like, so yeah. you know, I've been, I've been, I've been, I've been 
come back and, and, and lost all that weight and, and he really got you know blood in my running you know it was quite a nice comeback story and I was competing at a reasonable level I, was, I think I joined uh, I was still running for Tips and Harry's at the time which, which was a Midland based club and uh, it was great to be back running for a club again and being part of a good team and all that kind of stuff and uh, yeah all, all, all disappeared over the, over the course of a few years and uh, I think I think second time round um, when I'd hit 16 stone um, again um, again I think it was uh, maybe maybe again something happened with work where just just had this little window of opportunity to just get back focused on on getting fit again and um, Second time round, my motivation was 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 was, was different. Um, the, tri the trigger was, was was I was getting chest pains, and my clothes weren't fitting. Everything was tight, and you know, I think I just got I just got married, and, and you know, and, um, I looked a mess. So um, I decided I, I needed to get fit second time round for more for health reasons mm -hmm. than than anything else, and. Uh, and I decided to be a bit more, a little bit more scientific about it, and a bit more disciplined. And, I, I, and by this point, I'd made, I'd made, I'd finally made that that link between diet, yeah. diet, <laughs> diet, and and weight. Yeah. And, so uh, that, that first time round, yeah. you didn't really have to do much with your diet. You just could you could run it. I off. I cleaned it up a little bit, yeah. but I I didn't. Diet, diet. So those gremlins, those diet gremlins yeah, are still there. Yeah, yeah. As soon as the yeah. running went away. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I cut yeah. out, you know, I cut out some of the, you know, I cut out some of my fast food habits, you know. But I was still, you know, I was, yeah, I was still, I was still eating reasonable and healthy. But, 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 but I was doing a lot, a lot of running. So I was running, you know, but in that, in that 20, um, in that 2009, 2011 period, you know, I, I got, I got back up to running like, 100, 110 mile weeks of running. So it's quite a lot of running. Um, and you know, you can't, I think the expression that gets used a lot is you can't outrun a bad diet. Yeah, yeah. You I'm know, so you can't yeah, outrun yeah, a bad yeah. diet. And that is true, that is totally true. Yeah. But you know, I, I was obviously. Um, uh, uh, but it's hard, to, it's hard to eat when you're running 110 miles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm obviously expending more calories than what I was taking I in. I think what it proved on this uh, as well, I think for most, for most people, because most people they'll say it's time, don't they? And I think work commitments and family and all the things, and that's where people go, you know, that part of your life is it's tough, isn't it? To, I mean, to I, keep yeah, it in balance yeah, yeah. and keep yeah. and I, keep in check, you know, like you're going through it with little ones now, aren't you? A little bit of your fitting training when you can. Yeah. And, You'd, and it's and we've all gone through it. Um, and it's I, just, I, um, I always I, I always tell people this like this story of like I um, when I was working for the buckets and I was all over the shop. Uh, I was living in Leeds. I was doing a load load of work in in uh, like Norfolk and Suffolk. So I used to drive down. I used to drive through a place called Thetford Forest. If you know Stepford Forest, massive, mm -hmm. massive forest, lovely part of the world, slap bang in the middle of sort of on the I think on the Norfolk Suffolk border, right? Driving through it all the time, right? never stopped once, never stopped once to go for a run, never, 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 just never. I never ran around my job. Mm -hmm. I might run on a weekend or I might run when I was back at home, but I've never run. When I was traveling for work, it's when you were heavy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. When you were just going through but, work. but when I'm back yeah. on, when I'm when I'm back on it, like even now, I'm in, I'm in a job where I, I need to travel for work, albeit mostly it's by train. But if I drive anywhere now, I always have a look to see where if there's anywhere nice to just stop off and do some do a run. Yeah. On the way there or on the way back, more often, more often on the way back, mm -hmm. then you're not having to worry about showering and stuff. But now, I, I, now I, I do some I do some great runs on. On canals, you can't you can't get lost on a canal. You know, you just go out and back. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I do some great runs. If I'm, if, you know, yesterday I ran in Regent's Park in London. Yeah. You know, you know, I get, I get to. I mean, I'm in London a lot of work, so but I get to run in all, all the London parks because I'm motivated to do it. Whereas when I wasn't when I wasn't motivated, I wouldn't even I wouldn't even pack my yeah. kit. You know, I wasn't yeah. even on my mind. But um, so yeah, so second time round. 
2018 it was um I, I knew that you know i wanted to lose weight again and, and i knew i knew I was, I was paranoid about this 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 foot problem mm. it's gone away obviously but you know i realized i had this potential achilles heel weakness and um i decided to use the gym to get the weight off so um, i'll tell you the story so i'm a big fan of uh I've always been a big fan of Shameless, the, 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 like the comedy drama yeah. uh, on Channel 4. So I downloaded it onto, um, I downloaded the, every, every episode uh, onto an iPad. And uh, I'd go into the gym and do an hour on the uh, elliptical machine, the cross trainer, uh, watching um, Shameless. And I watched, uh, I watched every single episode of Shameless on this elliptical trainer in, in, in what in one hour uh, one hour um, one sessions, hour <laughs> right and i got i got so um, i got so into it and i love shameless and i think I, I think first i think i'd only seen the first four series so i watched them all again and then obviously from, from series five onwards it was all it was all new to me um, uh, i'd go in there do my hour um watching the episode of Shameless. Then, then I'd just lift some weights, just machine weights. Mm. Then, I don't know, I'd, I'd been in the gym for about an hour 40 in total. But it got to the point where I wanted to go to the gym just so I could get my, you sure my Shameless fix. <laughs> I, never, I never watched a single episode of Shameless <laughs> not in the gym. <laughs> so, you know, there's always the temptation. Like, it's it's habit it's stacking, it's isn't it? Habit yeah. stacking. Yeah, yeah. 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 I could have, like, Set me out on a plateau, oh, sat in bed or whatever, yeah. and watched Shameless, you know. But I only watched it in the gym, right. so, I, so it made it made going to the gym easy. And, the, and, yeah. and, and, and I also fixed my diet a lot better second time round, and the weight fell off. It, it was it was almost miraculous. It came off at the rate of about three pounds a week. So I lost I lost second time round. I lost six stone in two years. Yeah. And, and yeah, especially yeah. as you're a little bit older. Sorry, sorry, older. sorry, sorry. One year. One year. In one year. Sorry, not two years. One year. So by 2019, I was down to about ten and a half stone. Yeah. Well, that, I mean, yeah. that's it. That, that's that. However, you get past forty, it becomes a lot harder to do that. Certainly, the same right. Yeah. So again, you know, for those people that are listening, kind of putting those two and two together, like exercise on its own can can do something. It's a much slower process. But yeah. if you get everything, all your ducks in the row, yeah, then. Then things happen at much, much junction. Yeah. Nice. So let's just be a bit conscious, Sam, because we, we always said that we want to keep these about 40 minutes. Yeah. Just so, let's just have a quick summary then, Mika, where we are now, and then in, in a minute we'll wrap it up and we'll do another episode yeah, yeah. in a month or a couple of months' time yeah, yeah. and we'll go and we'll see where we're going and see the improvements on so that. Yeah, so like second so like my, my, my second big comeback, uh probably peaked peaked last year. So obviously lost the uh, Lost a bit of 20, 2020 with the pandemic, yeah. 2021 with the pandemic as well. So not 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 many um, not as many competitive opportunities, but um, I've I've properly motivated um, as I approach forty five because I wanted to try and get after some of the um, some of the old time um, records for bet forty fives mm -hmm. uh, in Great Britain, yeah. and I, I was chasing after. Some of the road times 5k 10k uh, track times 3k 5k 10k and uh, i guess the highlight was was last spring um i ran i ran 14.44 for 5k on the roads which is a british uh, bet 45 record so i know he does park run can probably um yeah. use that re re relate relate as, uh, as a gauge point, you would laugh at me yeah. <laughs> 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 on that 5k <laughs> run yeah so, yeah so that i guess that was a that was a highlight last spring um i've you know i've i've, I've raced i've raced well the winter just gone uh i, I won the um, european uh masters uh, indoor 3k title for, for bet 45s um you know and i've had a little bit of a wobble the last few months got past some achilles problems I've, I've put a bit of weight back on again probably got a stone carrying a stone now and we're obviously working together on helping, okay. helping me shift now. Yeah. Yeah, uh, sure. And I'm, I'm, I'm still, I'm still planning to 
Come on, then, get strong and get that record, bro. Come on, get after it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So watch this space is what we're saying, yeah. right? So we'll yeah. um, we'll come back to it and we'll yeah, do another geez. one and we'll come we'll, we'll hit some time. We'll see how your weight's going, yeah, and how yeah. the times and how your runs are going. Yeah, so yeah. We'll have catch up soon. Yeah, cheers. Yeah. All right, good. Happy with that. I hope you enjoyed that. So some some quite helpful tips there, isn't it? As well. So the, the main one being you can't outrun it, or you yeah, you yeah. need to be aware of your <laughs> diet if you need to lose weight. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Awesome, great. Thanks yeah, for joining yeah, us. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Really good, Cheers. Okay. I hope you enjoyed it. Anybody listening? Cheers. Cheers. Thank you for listening to today's episode. If you like the episode, we'd like you to share with us that on YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. You can listen again on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Please leave us a rating and a review, and any comments would be more than appreciated. And hopefully, you'll we'll tune back next time for our next episode. The Yorkshire Fitness Podcast.